Hello, welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for Inequalities, Axioms. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to state the order axioms, prove a basic fact using the order axioms, and avoid common pitfalls with inequalities. The motivation for this section is fairly simple. We would like to prove a variety of inequalities, and we would like to do that in a rigorous way. So in this section, we'll see the axioms that we use to build up more sophisticated and more complicated facts. Before we start, a bit of notation. This is somewhat simple, but it's often not defined and leads to confusion. So let's define them right now. We will say that a real number is positive if x is greater than zero. We will say that it's negative if x is strictly less than zero. And we'll say that it's non-negative if it's not negative. In other words, x is greater or equal to zero. Now we come to the bulk of what we want to do today. These are the order axioms. These axioms will hold for all four, for any four real numbers, a, b, c, and d, and I'll go through them quickly. The first one says that if you have an inequality a less than b and c is a positive constant, then you can multiply through by that positive constant and it won't change the inequality. The second one says that if you multiply an inequality by negative one, it will reverse. The third one says that squares are always non-negative. The fourth one says that you can add two inequalities together. The fifth one says that if a is non-negative, then there is a unique non-negative number square root of a. The sixth one says that if a and b are both positive and a is less than b, then taking a reciprocal changes the order. And the final one says that if a is less than b and b is less than c, then a is less than c. That's called being transitive. Now what we're going to do is take these order axioms and we're going to prove more sophisticated uh, facts than the axioms themselves. Before we continue, you should show that axiom four is stronger than axiom two. So if you wanted to, you could omit axiom two from the list and you'd still be able to prove everything you want. So show that if you assume axiom four, you can prove axiom two as a consequence. Now, besides the axioms, there are many other things that are true about inequalities. I've picked two facts that are true, and we're going to prove these using the axioms. The first one says that if a and b are both positive and a is less than b, then the squares have the same order as a and b. And the second one says that if you take the square root of a positive inequality, it maintains the inequality. So let's prove number one using the axioms. This is an if-then statement, so we start with the if part. Next, we know that since a is positive, we can multiply through by a and maintain the inequality. So a squared is less than b times a. Alternatively, we could use axiom one, but on, on b instead. So we multiply through by b on the original inequality. That will give us a b is less than b squared. Now we combine these to get um, a squared is less than a b, which is less than b squared. So the major idea for this proof was that we start with our basic inequality and we multiply through in two different ways. Now let's prove uh, the second fact about square roots. It's an if-then statement, so we assume the if part. Now the proof for this one will be slightly different. By axiom four, you can subtract a from both sides. So we subtracted a from a less than b. Then you can use difference of squares to see that b minus a can be written in this way. We're gonna come back to this inequality in a moment. For now, we have to play around a little bit with something else. 
Note that since square root of uh, a and square root of b are positive, then 1 over that is also positive. So then using the inequality star, that 0 is less than this product, we multiply through by this positive constant and get 0 times this thing is less than that times c. Now we do a bunch of cancellation. These will cancel. The zeros will become 0. So this gives us that square root of b minus square root of a is positive. And then by axiom 4, we add square root of a to both sides. So we get what we want. Note that these two proofs are quite different in flavor, and they have a different main idea. Now, for these proofs, we should justify every single step using one of the axioms or one of the basic facts. But here, we kind of snuck in a, a little thing. We just said note that this is true. But this should be justified using the axioms. So as an exercise, go through and justify why is this positive from everything we know already. Another exercise for you is, if possible, use the main idea from the proof of fact 1 to prove fact 2. And if possible, use the main idea from the proof of fact 2 to prove fact, well, this should say fact 1. Sorry about that. So use the main proof idea of one of them to prove the other. And for your information, one of the two things I'm asking you to do will be impossible. But that's kind of the point, is that one of them you'll be able to use a different proof technique, but the other one you won't be able to. Before our reflections, we'll end with some common mistakes. So these are some mistakes that show up year after year that students, their misconceptions that students have. So let's go through them and uh, explain uh, what each of the mistakes are and how to correct them. So if you prefer, take a moment right now to go through all four of these and check for yourself what are the mistakes being made and how would you correct someone who did these. All right, so what's going on in the first one? So it looks like the person multiplied by minus two and forgot to change the way that the inequality um, faces. So they incorrectly applied axiom two. What's going on in number two? Well, it looks like they took a reciprocal, but then forgot to switch the order. So they need to remember that for axiom, in axiom six, reciprocals change the order of the inequality. What's happening in number three? Well, are you allowed to multiply a number through an inequality and have it stay the same? Only if it's positive. So the issue here is that since x can be any real number, it could sometimes be negative, and that would change the inequality. So if you ever have something like this show up in a proof or an argument you're doing, you should break it up into three cases, where x is positive, x is 0, or x is negative. And then finally, a very common one. If a is less than b, then a squared is less than b squared. Well, the issue here is that the person is trying to use fact 1, but fact 1 requires both a and b to be positive. Can you see why a and b have to both be positive here? Finally, let's take some time to reflect. What is the difference between an order axiom and a fact, or a basic fact? Why did we include axiom 2 on the list of order axioms if we know that it follows from axiom 4. What are some common misunderstandings about inequalities? And finally, can a theorem have multiple different proofs? Thank you very much, and have a good day.